Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to Pinball Arcade. So I decided to launch the application in the DX9 version. You can see in the lower right hand, it says uh, VS, which I assume is supposed to mean version of software 1.71.33. That is the same number for the DX12 version of the game, but uh, I mean the DX11 version of the game, but it does potentially have some um, different, maybe smoother playing, and we do know there's some different visuals. We're going to be playing Pinbot, which if there is a version 1.7, the audio also sounds very loud uh, all in this version, so we may have to come in here and change it. We'll be playing Pinbot today. Uh, which is a pro version so what i've been thinking is if it doesn't have a pro pack for purchase at all that probably is a table that was made for something below version one or version one and then the 0.71 versions after that could be tiny upgrades per table every time a new table is put out uh, for whatever little program problem they would have and then I imagine the third dot might be um, might be bug fixes in general. The 71 there changes a lot because it is not inconceivable that it would be a case of version 1 and then the week of the year uh, that something was released. But 71 is higher than 52 weeks, which would be more than one year. And since this came out in 2018, 71 is definitely not 156 weeks. So, yeah, that 71 would be too small a number in that case. <clears throat> so, yeah. It, it, it probably isn't a mix of version 1.0 standards where 1.0 is supposed to be a final product for at least all the features as being as polished and ready to, to go as possible and then anything past 1.0 would be working towards adding new features for a version 2.0 which we probably will never see anyways your control. yeah that is incredibly loud you know why it's incredibly loud? Yeah, because they're different programs, and because they're different programs, I had only adjusted the audio to the other program. All right, well, the good news is I do have software that lets me adjust the audio. Uh, automatically without having to tab out so it should be now at the 10 percent where it normally is i have to lower the audio in all games to about 10 percent um i don't really know of a better way to do it sadly anyways pinbot from 1986 we kind of jumped over 1985 it's just like yeah it really feels like there was maybe one or two 1984 tables one 1985 table and i went to 86 is a brilliant design from industry veteran Barry Osler and Python Aghello. Angelo? Angelo? I, I imagine that's pronounced Angelo. Players are challenged with advancing to all nine planets of the solar system before re reaching the sun. The playfield features a robot visor that opens to reveal two eye eject holes and a skill shot into the vortex and, and the solar ramp which can be raised to hit the target beneath it. With this, with its outstanding lighting effects and audio, including robot-like speech, Pinbot is truly the ultimate machine. It was so successful that it spawned two sequels, The Machine, Bride of Pinbot, released in 1991, and Jackbot in 1996. 12,001 units of this table were produced. It seems like they felt a need to make that extra one. Uh, So, what's weird 
about this table is I would have sworn it was an older table. More than anything else. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, the controller was not working for a second there. Um, what you can see, first of all, in the DirectX 9 is you have a pictures on the walls you, where it says shoot again, and you can see there's a painting on the left there. Um, why these photos are not on the DirectX 11 version, I have no idea. They probably, if I was to guess, are there, are removed so that graphics cards don't have to render them. But it definitely makes the walls pretty blind. I actually did get look at some YouTube footage of someone playing the At Games pinball version from their own standalone equipment, and they just bother don't bother to put a background at all, and it's just blackness. And it would be nice, frankly, if that was a feature. I imagine a lot of pinball players would just appreciate total blackness around the cabinet, play in a void. Nobody's gonna care that much uh, this is a genius table but the way it sounds and the way it looks is kind of also a throwback to older tables um, the only thing you arguably might complain about is there are on the right side five different colored uh, standing targets and you have to hit them basically five times to succeed but then they help you with that because directly up the center lane this is a very wide center lane shot table you have the same five colored line things so it gives you two opportunities to uh to really view this and i don't know why i'm just looking at the attract mode when i can go to the table exploration mode and show it off there and here's here we can see that it's not showing all the way through the table uh, this time. Um, so you have a center peg, no kickback, a fairly wide out lane, or over the top of the in lane and out lane. You have a two, three, four, and five multiplier. The center peg is kind of hexagonal. Boy, do those flippers look nice, though. I wonder if the game it literally looks better in the DirectX 9 mode, too. Maybe that's part of the reason why Pinball Arcade kind of fell, fell apart, is that they were unable to adapt their programming and their visuals to the new thing. The one thing I will say, though, is that the DirectX 9 version of this game makes the lighting look a little bit darker and duller. There's no lights from like the Jupiter light, for instance. There's no ray tracing or, or dittering or affecting the background where in the real world, it would lighten the background when the lights are on and, and the background would get darker. Uh, but those kinds of visual effects probably have a high visual cost. Looks like there's maybe a ramp there, but I don't, I don't think there actually is. I think it's just a slingshot. Then you have three standing targets that are separate there. And then th then you have this ramp that goes all the way up and all the way over here into the pin bot uh, or pin girl. Um, but this is actually an upper play field. So this can be... If you're really lucky, bounce back into the spinner, but it really wouldn't be. I don't remember how you get to the spinner. Maybe it's through this part? Hmm. I know that when you launch the ball, that it goes to that spinner. That may be the only point where you can get to the spinner. So it... It goes here, and it looks like it would hit this pinball, but that's not, I'm fairly certain that's not where it goes. I'm fairly certain it goes under the table and all the way around, and then you're looking for a skill shot of 150,000, which is in the middle, so you don't want to go too far, and you don't want to go too short, um, which this is a genius 
kind of spiralized ramp that you've pretty much never seen in another table. And then this upper play field has a hole right in the heart of the, this uh, pin, pinbot girl, or bride of pinbot, that drops the ball into the bumpers, which the bumpers on this table are pretty encased in this, I guess you'd almost call it a side play field. And, yeah, uh, they bounce around. And they really can't go anywhere other than draining directly into the in lane, which that's the kind of improvements you really like to see. The ball can escape that way, but even if the ball did escape that way, the odds of it just like losing momentum and then curving and going straight down are fairly low. Uh, you could potentially shoot directly to the out lane if it had a lot of momentum, but it's not likely to have that either. There is a target below. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, there's like a sink target below that ramp. And then the eyes and the lid don't pop up in the table exploration mode, which is weird because you'd think that this was an attract mode. So at some point, the attract mode, I think, should open up the, uh, the helmet, the visor. There's a sink target there. <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. So there's quite a lot on this table. And this may be the first table that even slightly bucks the trend on the sexiness uh, when it's selling somewhat on sex. The tables tend to be pretty terrible. There is an indication of humans and astronauts, but they really don't play much of a role. Hmm. Notice how they've put pegs just kind of in parallel and then centered the image somewhat. So the pegs hit the shoulders and the stomach and the thighs of the character. But then there are several pegs here that that are just more for play. And these are just rubber bands, not, not actual slingshots, which that's something that you typically don't see. And there... It did open. There's two multi-ball ball sinks where you give Pinbot eyes, basically. And then that's how you lock your multi-ball. Then on the back glass you see a different non-pink version of a, a female robot. Alright, let's see what else. Let's look at the flyer and then let's hop into the game. Hmm. This really is a table that also highlights that theme itself is not anywhere as important as how the table plays. And, like, sure, if you have just an awful theme, maybe that would turn some people off, but no table has that bad of an awful, awful theme. Going Nuts is probably the worst theme we've seen, and probably the worst theme you could think of for pinball. Unless you're just going to make a table with no theme at all. Uh, so the front of this flyer is literally just... Looks like a real world picture of an actual robotic arm. Uh, some kind of stock footage. And then the back has multiple 3x3 three three grid images. With descriptions of each. each. So that they're not even trying to sell the game from its overall appearance. They they knew that this was going to be a well-received table uh, just by its features alone. Either that or I thought this was going to be a mediocre table and it just turned out to be a breakout success. Hmm. Listening to that music, you can see that there's quite a lot going on there. Now, how do you advance to Jupiter? My well, goal is to reach to the planet Jupiter, and then the sun, which means I think they probably knew that Uranus and Pluto, Pluto existed um, at this time, but like 86 seems like a really late point to have not discovered Uranus or Pluto, 
and it seems too early to get into the whole mess of either classifying Pluto as a planet or not. Um, but I imagine they just felt like the game was getting redundant. Maybe there is also maybe a scientific explanation that you would have to slingshot over away from Jupiter to to have an orbit wide enough to safely uh, slingshot around the sun. I don't feel like that's the case, though. But, but yeah, that's the rules. Uh, there are two ways to advance to the planets. Complete the left in-lane rollover. Lights. Advanced planet spot target. That's hidden there. I didn't even see that one. When lit, hitting the target advances the planet and scores zero points. Wow. If advanced planet is not lit, hitting the target scores 5,000 points. The other way to advance planets is completing the bank of drop targets over there. Each complete drop target scores 1,000 points and adds 1,000 points to the bonus. So by far you want to hit that more often. Once the drop target is complete, a 15 second timer is activated. The bank of drop targets must be completed before the timer expires or the bank resets. If the flashing drop targets is the first one you complete, it raises the solar ramp uh, for a shot at collecting the energy value, referring to the energy value for more details. Completing the bank of drop targets scores 25,000 points and advances the planet. Here is the order of the planets. You start with Pluto. Interesting. Uh, then Neptune. So they're kind of out of order, or they might be in order in which they often are sometimes closer to each other than you would think because the orbits are not all in line. Then Uranus. Then Saturn. Then Jupiter. Then Mars. Oh, so you're just getting closer and closer. This is the robots making their way to Earth, but then kind of ignoring Earth and then go going to Venus and then Mercury and the Sun. 20,000 points is added to the bonus for each planet you advance to. A special is automatically awarded when you reach Jupiter. Reaching the Sun lights another special at the advanced planet spot target when it's lit. Hit that spot target to earn the a, earn a special. Both specials award an extra ball. Once you re reach the Sun, the planet resets, with Pluto being the next planet. Okay. Additional specials cannot be earned by advancing to Jupiter or the Sun a second time. Alright. So that's your real goal. And that's kind of the the beauty of more modern tables as we're getting to them. Is that... Uh, you just don't really want a table that is kind of lame and doesn't have a goal so so you want a little bit of that uh, but you kind of want one main goal even the um table we played just last the hot pursuit pursuit one where you're uh, running red lights was perhaps too simplistic of a table uh, compared to this and I guess maybe you want two or three goals uh, more than uh, than just one very sim standard or linear goal. I get the feeling that the flippers are a little weak on this table. And three times now I've missed the, the butt skill shot. I think I like this angle better. This is definitely a table where you're gonna have to get the camera angle perfect. Hmm. Hmm. I suppose it is worth mentioning that you only really accomplish the in-lane ramp to the right in-lane if you managed to 
not drain out on that top play field into other places. definitely does feel like a table that could use a little bit more power behind those flippers but that might very well have been exactly the real case so we hit enough there which I imagine you don't really have to hit all light up the whole grid but but yeah Something close to hitting the whole grid is required. Hmm. This is really a great table to A, not get bored with, but B, also practice those long center shots. Although there's not a big challenge. They, they did a kind of genius thought here by having robotic sound effects you don't hit that uncanny valley situation uh, plus it uh, it certainly implies that the voice is being immediately synthesized when it definitely isn't it, that would be ridiculous so decent warm-up game Got a free credit. And immediately got an achievement. Hmm. So you want to probably get it about there. That's probably... Nope, that's not... wasn't strong enough. This is still a table where you potentially would end up going in the going for the multi ball a lot and and the multi ball might help you to advance the planets or it might not, just depending on if you are over practicing on shooting directly up to center. There, there I got the, the bonus without even trying that time. Hmm. Hitting that sinking target multiple times I believe does actually increase the success. I don't think you have to do anything else with that that target. Just hit it a bunch of times. Hmm. There's enough slingshots and things to bounce the ball to the wrong place. If if you are slightly off on your shots. Yeah, and I don't know if you would really wanna have a ramp in the center or something to, to try and avoid the ball potentially draining out through the um, draining out through the uh, center lanes. I suppose it is worth mentioning that when the ramp is loaded up like that and if the ball loses momentum and manages to to go backwards on the ramp it tends to be designed pinball tables tend to be designed so that the ramp will fall back down um, not get potentially stuck there hmm. well, I imagine there have been scenarios plenty of scenarios where a pinball might get stuck under a, a ramp or a moving piece so they have to be fairly careful about where and when they introduce gates and ramps that that are moving 
and when they move. Apparently, Am and Jupiter in this game just didn't quite make it. And you have a slow, slow experience happening here as far as just getting into the next game. Which that definitely does highlight a point on emulation if you're emulating a, a arcade game, for instance, uh, on like RetroPie. You could easily just have save states where it saves everything into the to RAM, or well, it saves the state of all the RAM, and then you could just nearly instantly load back into that save position which would A, allow you to practice shots, or B, cheat quite a bit in pinball. But at the very least, it would let you save a spot when you're about to start a game where you haven't even launched the ball, and just reload to that instead of having to go through this whole wrap-up that you may just not care about. Um, so, as an emulator, Pinball Arcade kind of lacks the technical features you would kind of like, like to see exist. Um, particularly if somebody just wants to play pinball. Hmm. I imagine a lot of pinball tables, particularly older uh, ones, or, or ones, newer ones, would let you just put in a quarter even when it was asking you to enter initials and start the next game. Uh, almost all tables have at least a like 30 second timer to, to put in the initials too, so you can't sit sit on that screen. Although we may not have hit hit that point by 86. Hmm. Yep. And l newer tables definitely have features where the game will completely end if you don't press the flipper or as something for several minutes. This is a table with a really good practice slingshot to practice the uh, strength of launching the ball. Um, arguably, there aren't as many tables as, as you would like that have really good slingshots anyways. Uh, I mean, plunger shots, skill shots. Um, but it is, it is kind of a secondary skill you, you want to work on. See, that, that's a great example of a tight center lane shot. You could have made these flippers slightly longer. I don't know if flippers ever really did change in length. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some companies' flippers are slightly longer. These flippers have thick rubber bands around them, which might be impacting the strength of the shot. Anyways, man, I am trying, and I am getting nowhere with that. Hmm. Yep, I gotta get better at nudging. This is a table that also has that secondary skill of wanting to be good at nudging. There we go. Oh, uh, the Vortex also gives you, I think, more score on the third ball than it does on the, the, um, first ball, or in second ball, too. 
What we don't have is a top lane or any rollovers on this table, but that's fine. If, if anything, you would argue, I, I imagine this was argued that this table has just too much on it. And of course, by having too much on it, it that's how it became really beloved is that there's just a lot to see here. They, they went all out where I could have easily seen them eliminate the vortex element since that doesn't really play a role. Um, uh, yeah, that was terrible. I could easily see them get rid of the upper play field since, well, that's a cool feature that doesn't really do anything. I could have seen them go with red, green, blue instead of five colors. Because, like, yellow and orange is getting kind of added there. And by modern mentality, they'd be using, like, cyan and magenta. And, um, as, like, co colors to red, green, green and blue. Cyan, magenta, and uh, indigo, I think, maybe? No, it's not indigo. I know there's three, like, different colors. Hmm. I guess I'm wrong about that. The vortex doesn't seem to be rewarding anything different on different balls. One thing I, I, I dislike about this table, and it's basically the only thing I dislike about this table, is that the flippers feel weak. They just don't feel like they have enough power. Which, if I physically owned a table like this, which seems like there was plenty of them made, so you probably could physically own one of these fairly, relatively speaking, fairly cheaply, um, the first thing I would do is tilt the table and adjust the height of the playfield so that it was less slanted towards the top. Uh, if I couldn't adjust that, then I would see if I could adjust the circuitry on the uh, on the flippers and give them more power, which might be as easy as replacing the resistor somewhere. Or it might be as difficult as literally just adding a voltage doubler circuit on a relay. Or setting the switches to activate a relay that gives more voltage to the motor. And I imagine there are very, very new tables that, that have very precise adjustments that maybe aren't made, uh, or maybe aren't made available to a, a simple mode for the operators, but are changeable by firmware, where you could adjust the strength, the maximum strength output of a, um, of a flipper or a bumper. Like having those as options, having the potential ability to change things like that could make a relatively bad table play a lot better. And of course that's one of the benefits that is always that has become very helpful for video game development is that you can change every single part of the game if, if it's not playing well. Make a game as service versus a game as uh, a finished product. It almost needs something on the table to, to show if the ball is going down a certain lane and is going to drain out because 
my, my slow eyes as, as I'm getting older can't can't quickly quick enough determine that I'm about to to drain out I'm not sure if we've actually used the in-lane ramp even once and you get double scores while you're in multi-ball so this is based on the number of balls on the table although I don't believe there's a way to actually increase the number of balls on the table so there is a secret shot where you can lock the ball again as it's closing and it won't just shoot it out it will instead I think oh reopen and keep the eyes open keep the visor open hmm. there's a flashing set of lights on the left there that don't feel like they've really played any role uh, in between the side standing targets or I guess those are drop down targets yeah there's quite a few flashing lights that don't really play a role, they just flash. But yeah, playing the DirectX 9 version of the table, everything is running fairly well. We've been playing for 36 minutes, so after this game, I'm gonna let's launch the DirectX 11 version of the table and see how this plays, if it plays any different in a noticeable way, since this is a table that I probably am going to want to play a little bit more of anyways. Like, we, we've already been playing for 36 minutes, and, and I really don't have any major desire to, to slow down. This table has music, and unlike the Hot Pursuit uh, uh, game, which was just one song that would play certain samples or cer certain, certain channels of the music, uh, so it would play like an underbeat and then a, a upper beat, an upper track. Um, Oh, so the number of balls on the table at that point affected the vortex, I think. Uh, this music is actually good, real music, good music. It is in a nice place where it's not annoying and it's, it's interesting enough and interesting sounding. I don't know where the other ball went. I either drained the other ball. No, the ball is locked. There, I drained the ball. That got a score multiplier times five. So I should be getting a fairly high score. Was there even a standard goal around the high, sc high score, though? This isn't one of those tables that has, like, a major bonus. Bonus is just whatever score you get per turn, and it's not adding up the bonus using lights on the table. You can kind of see how, at least in old tab pinball table design, the score was being shown on the lower playfield because they wanted you to keep your eyes on the lower playfield. You basically would never actually look at the backboard. That was for other players who were waiting their turn to follow you in, in high scores and things like that. Uh, it's not until you start to see L real full LCDs and LCD games where it will lock the ball and tell you to look up at the screen. Uh, that's that's gonna happen probably about the 90s early 90s 
Um, but until then, there's no way you could be encouraged to look up towards the backboard. Which arguably makes, makes a kind of weird argument that there probably shouldn't be any backboards at all. Um, like, if you were designing a pinball table today, you would not give it a secondary screen backboard. Uh, because you'd be designing a pinball table to use a single monitor and it would just be digital with no real pinball elements at all. But they needed the backboards in arcades in the old days because it was all about getting people's attention from across the room and people can't see the slanted pool table field uh, from across the room. So unl unless they were going to do something akin to like a Japanese wall scroll where it was just a straight up um, like printed image uh, directly behind the pinball table. I got two free games. Um, you see that was number two on high scores. That is pretty good. Although I, I will say the menu still feels pretty pretty weird. So we would have had to earn an extra ball and advance to Jupiter, which both of those I think actually you get an extra ball pretty much as you advance to Jupiter. Alright, well, let's exit out and launch the game again in the DirectX 11 version. And that way you can see the difference in the visuals. Just on the main page alone, there's fairly different visuals. I doubt the audio changes much, but yeah, you have the attract mode without the, without the, um, pictures on the walls, just no reason. The camera angle's the same, but yeah, and, and this flippers look different. They, they look... They look more realistic. You still don't have a glitch where you can see below and through the cabinet. Hmm. But these lights do seem slightly different. Maybe not amazingly different. I don't feel like the DirectX 12 mode probably has different resolutions. Which, in 2021, that would be the next part of this, is that you would want... All of these images to be rendered at 2K or 4K, if you could do that. Um, I don't know how much of this is just straight up scanned. But you're definitely seeing more reflections. And uh, maybe unrealistic reflections. Maybe not. The pink on this character is seem seems to me to be a lot less pink and a lot more transparent. So that you can actually see through it. And that's probably how it really did play. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these plastic components were reflective too. Remember there's a glass on top of these tables also. So yeah, it looks different. It's a little bit harder to say it looks better. But it definitely looks different. Let's see how it plays. Well, that was a just total miss of the vortex and a total drain. The camera angles pretty much uh, the same. The thing you would want here is this angle here so you can get actual strength. There we go. And theoretically, those markers would, if you remember where that one 
a marker on the side was, you can do that same shot every time. Although, in practical experience, I, I've, I've found that plungers tend to be fairly random, even if you are trying to do the exact same shot, as if the springs themselves are just a little inaccurate, see. So the second from the bottom on the right, black triangle, you would think that's where it's supposed to be. But you can also see that that plunger totally messed up and there's no real world explanation for that happening that way. There probably is an element to the fact that the pinball lane that the ball is launched in is wider than it really needs to be for the pinball. So it's not a case of the pinballs uh, rolling against the edges, which means the pinball, when it can be launched, could be slightly to the left or slightly to the right of the central point of the plunger, which adds some randomness. That was a terrible table. Uh, terrible play. And see, that one overshot it, and that was still pretty much the exact same thing. This is also a table where I just don't feel like any of the camera angles are quite where I'd like them to be. It would be really, really nice if Pinball Arcade had let you just use the right stick to move the cameras even if that was a custom mode we had to go into a different mode and pause the game uh, but being left with just a small stationary a selection of the three or four shots seems seems ridiculous So I moved the forward one planet. And yeah, I've kind of run out of things to say. Now I just want to play. It's true for every table, though I suppose you will eventually just do everything there is to do on the table, and you can't really use that as a big complaint, but this once again feels like once you get those left tar drop down targets really programmed into your muscle memory, once you can get the multiplayer without even trying, once you can get the the skill shot every single time once you can get that left right in the the left ramp and the um and the sinker target um you've perfected your skill at the, this table you have incredibly very little randomness on this table because everything in the that is random which would be like the bumpers is hidden in that bumper section which it's fairly difficult to get into the bumper section and even when you do get into the bumper section uh, might be a case actually that if you shoot the ball back up as the visor is closing it just doesn't sink the ball because that's what it seemed like there's definitely a scenario where I was two planets away do you keep your progression 
I think you do. So it's over the course of three balls. The physics is totally wrong there on the plunger. And maybe that is happening more on the DirectX 11, 12 uh, uh, version of the game table. It, this would be very nice if it had a ball saver feature. Of course, you're going to run into an interesting scenario where we potentially play like Jackbot or Bride of Pinbot and then there's something slightly off about them too. Because I doubt Bride of Pinbot as a table is just Pinbot with a ball saver feature and a kickback. Because that would be too boring. So, ideally, ideally, I would like to play Pinbot and just make some modifications to it. This also pretty much highlights why. I can't really complain too much if there were the occasional cheaters uh, who are bringing out magnets to, to move them the pinballs uh, away from, from draining to the out lanes. But I imagine amongst other pinball players they would Cheaters would be fairly ostracized, like because everybody else is playing fairly and taking their their random bad events and bad games with the good games. That's one of the things about the long lastingness of a game is if a game can be perfected and it's a hundred percent skill, it gets fairly boring. The perfect example of that is tic-tac-toe. Like, nobody wants to play tic-tac-toe after about the age of five or six because once both players understand the, the strategy to it, it will almost always end in a tie. Um, whereas chess has too many complicated moves to be perfected by anything other than a supercomputer. Um, and thus it's still interesting to humans to play and pinball in particular is about the one of the most random real world games you could play which gives it some lasting power wow so there's an early visor opening ability as a secondary kind of skill shot. I'd forgotten about that. I've yet to see any slowdowns. And I would say maybe the flippers are... No, they, they feel weak still in both both versions which kind of makes sense the physics and the the coding really shouldn't change it should just be the visuals that change between DirectX 9 and DirectX 11 and theoretically DirectX 11 should be better should be smoother and be able to show more I do feel like the flippers look more realistic and the lighting looks more realistic but I wouldn't blame people if they saw absolutely no difference at all. Um, but then you also have the pictures in the background not showing, which maybe that's intentional because the pictures in the background were distracting. I don't know. Hmm. 
You could easily have seen an argument ar around making a table that was just one big vortex with maybe multiple in lanes and out lanes. And it was, y you could have like a climb mountain climbing themed table, just a giant vortex in the center. Although maybe you can't make the vortex as much bigger than they are, otherwise they'd start hitting the, the top class of the table. So that might be a consideration. So maybe you'd have to have three vortexes, which climbing three different mountains would still work. Um, I don't know if that's an interesting enough table. You'd probably want a ramp to act like a bridge between one vortex to the other vortex, which would be a really long top lane type shot. And see, this definitely is a table that I just don't want to put down. It bumped over, it jumped over the, the hole there. Man. You can definitely see how the outlane could have used the bumper and some different angles. I imagine if there is any organization that keeps high scores for pinball tables, uh, they would have to work very hard to make sure tables are standardized and maintained well. It would be so easy to put just a, a, a bit of double-sided tape, a bit of gunk, a bit of glue uh, in a certain place and, and it's would raise the raise the surface uh, enough to lower the percentage chances of a ball draining out the out lane or going in a direction you don't want it to go. I can tell you that those yellow flashing lights were very very bright in the real world. Like they, they weren't blindingly bright or anything crazy. There weren't any lawsuits as far as I know around them, but. They, they were there to catch your attention on a table there to catch your attention and I guess if you were ever gonna have a table that made an argument for the rise of ADHD Pinbot is a good one to blame there's colors and flashing lights and music and just a whole bunch of a flash when you in comparison to say Central Park here. Let, let's let's just see from 1966 to 1985 the difference. No music, just quietness. A single little bell when you hit something. Flippers are in way different places. It is so. No lane select, no, no multi ball. So not what you would, what pinball had, has even become by '86. That there's two center lane drain outs, even and that's fairly crazy. There's only four uh, digits on the, the dial, no digital scores. This is an, a fully electromechanical table no no solid state circuitry two out lanes and basically no in lane and let's see if you can we do a table inspection no but if you look at like the the men and women drawn, this is 1966 wholesome classical uh, imagery. Only thing you could probably complain about is the fact that there is basically no minorities in it. But heck, that was 1966, um, and I guess if you were going to make that argument, 
then you pretty much have to make that argument in every game. Like, you uh, every game up until you hit, like, genie here, where I imagine these genies are supposed to be represent Middle Eastern people, and then you have fantasy characters. Uh, but, like, Spanish eyes, for instance. Maybe those are supposed to be Spanish people. It's it's an artistic depiction, so... Uh, but a guy with a red mustache being Spanish is a weird choice, too. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. That was Pinbot. Uh, surprisingly, to me, I didn't actually get all the table goals done. Which I feel like I would have done that. Um eventually and let's see just this week we've got i imagine way more people playing and scoring fairly high hmm. if anything i i kind of would have expected in the top 100 more high scores but yeah plenty of people still playing pinbot uh, which yeah the first game that looks kind of like it's sort of selling on six and was actually good, but the, the actual table itself is the reason why it's so good. And eventually, that means we will get to... I know I saw Jackbot as... Here's Bride of Pinbot. Here, from 1991. And let's see, where's Jackbot? Here's Jackbot here, which we should probably just look and do some table explorations. Let's so let's see if we can do this. Pro menu, table exploration. And then we'll use the controller and move the mouse away. So, maybe a slight change on the art. Uh, the art is definitely different now. Then you're seeing more of, uh, less of a focus around going around the sun and more of a focus of, I guess, playing uh, poker. Shoot again. Still... No kickbacks, three drop down targets still, same ramp, but this time it's got uh, some lights to kind of direct you more. Same color, same grid, here you have a different image of a female, same vortex. It is basically the exact same table with maybe some slight changes on how it plays which i'm i'm actually a little shocked by this i would have expected there to be more you you can see a full lcd screen instead of just lcd digits at this point um but i guess you just don't really mess with perfection they've changed the visor so you can see through it now seems like you're playing if if I was guessing, Jackbot is probably supposed to be canonically the uh, the child of Pinbot and Bride of Pinbot. My God, she's alive! Hmm. So let's look at Bride of Pinbot now. Promo version not available for the sable sound, unfortunately. This table, you can see, is completely different. So, that that makes a lot more sense to, to not make your sequel the exact same. Uh, there's a top lane now that draws down the mouth of the Bride of Pinbot, and certainly this is definitely selling on sex at this point. Big old William Speaker grill. Uh, light up hair. LEDs, quite a different table, 
I'll be interested when we get to that. Uh, because, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Pride of Pinball did not play, play particularly well. Or sell as well as Pinbot did. But it makes so much sense if you just had a generic table to call it Bride of Pinbot. That way, if an arcade has Pinbot, or, or even maybe two copies of Pinbot, directly to the left or right of that, you can put Bride of Pin Pinbot and convince some people to play a game that's probably of slightly less quality. Or you can even, uh, directly to the left or right of that, put also Jackbot. So you can have three of the bot series of tables uh, um, next to each other. Which pinball machines being so expensive tends not to get sequels. In fact, I'm not sure we are going to see a single sequel really. I mean, Star Trek The Next Generation compared to Star an original Star Trek table probably exists. A Doctor Who table in the 90s versus a Doctor Who in the uh, 2000s makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure if there is even a Terminator 1 pinball table that exists. This is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Um, it would be fairly easy to make a Space Shuttle 2, for instance, or um, High Speed uh, 2, but why put a 2 after such generic names? anyways and, and instead just call it something different with a different generic name that seems to be their standard way of handling things anyways that's going to be it for this recording next time we'll be looking at f14 special which will be i imagine the first airplane focused or fighter jet focused table uh, table but it probably wouldn't be too different than firepower one and firepower two uh yeah, that, that was one that had a sequel, I suppose. And Eldorado City of Gold was a reskin. But even Jackbot was not just a reskin of uh, Pinbot. They changed a few things. They changed the lights around, at least, and how the game played. Yeah, anyways, that's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wish list. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.